Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I want to thank you all for stopping by. So in today's video, you guys are getting another thrift to treasure. I am definitely continuing upcycling items that I'm gonna be bringing to Cranberry Fest. So today you will have five items that I have thrifted for Cranberry Fest and I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. If you haven't been to my channel before, what you're gonna find is a lot of DIY, thrift hauls, thrift flips, really a day in the life of a small business owner. If that is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. That way you'll be notified every time I release a video every Monday and Friday. I'm also on other socials. So every Monday and Wednesday, I do go live over on Facebook and I have been putting out a ton more content over there. So uh, if you haven't yet, go follow me on my other socials, but I hope you enjoy today's video. For project one, I found this old black tea kettle and I am pretty sure I paid half price for it. There is no lid, but right away I knew that I wanted to add something to it, um, upcycle it in some way. And this pack of IOD transfers is one of my favorites. Uh, if you, I actually calculated it out and there, the cost of the transfer versus how many items are in it, you're paying less than a dollar per transfer. So if you think about it, you're going to get your money's worth out of the set. I, um, this is my second set that I've gone through or I started to go through. I have upcycled that many items with my first set. And at first I thought I was going to go with this. And now looking back, I think the first one that I cut out, I think is more of like a fallish transfer than the one I actually chose. So I cut this out, I looked at it, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. Even, um, I should have did something with maybe oranges, but for whatever reason, I decided to go with the roses, and I did that because I thought the red would really pop, and then I thought, oh, I could put it near like my holiday display with the reds, and I went with it. So if you haven't used a transfer yet, they are super simple. You peel off that backing and you place it wherever you want it. And I always start by placing it in the middle. I try to get it all centerized, rub in the center, and then I just take that stick. It's the transfer stick that comes with it. And I just start rubbing and I work my way uh, to each edge. Um, and then basically to once you're ready, once you've rubbed over the entire piece, then that clear backing that it's on, I just start pulling on one side and then I just keep rubbing and make sure that the entire transfer sticks to whatever piece that you're applying it to. So um, if a piece would not stick, just lay it right back down and then continue to rub and it will come right off that backing. It's as simple as that. One last thing, once it's off, you'll wanna take that plastic piece and rub it all over the transfer and that's called burnishing and it actually burnishes the transfer into your item. So after the transfer is on and you have it all burnished, then what I recommend doing is applying a clear coat. And I am using Big Top. I'm going to apply that over the entire piece. And actually, once I started doing this, I thought I'm gonna apply the Big Top over the whole entire um, kettle. And the reason I did that is it actually made it um, really like it cleaned it up and it made it look like kind of like pop. So that is what I did here. And I actually did two coats over the transfer just to ensure that it is completely sealed. And um, that way it gives it a little bit more endurance on this kettle.
for project two, I did find this crate. Anytime I find any items like this, I always grab them. I just think they're super cute and you can upcycle them in so many different ways. For this upcycle, what I planned on doing is taking weathered wood by DIY and we are gonna paint the entire edge of the top and then the entire edge of the bottom. And after it's dry, then we're gonna go back in and we are going to seal it. So anytime you use DIY paint, you do need to seal it because it can be reactivated with water. And then I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to this. So in a couple past videos, I did use the pumpkins decoupage paper to complete two projects. And this paper is so beautiful. Um, and I'm gonna show you the two projects that I completed, but there was a lot of leftover little pieces. And anytime I have leftovers, I always keep them. So right away, I'm like, how can I use all these leftover pieces? So I'm just playing around with uh, the pumpkin, the leaves, there's a couple little acorns, there was a mushroom left over. And I placed them all and I decided, yep, this is how I'm going to do it. So when I had all those pieces still laid out, I took a pencil and I just did a rough outline of the entire, um, how I had it laid out. And then I'm going back and I am using White Swan from DIY and I am just painting white in that area. Anytime you use decoupage paper, it really makes the papers pop if you have a white background. And I have showed it both ways on some of my past videos where I don't paint the background and you just get a more muted look. So if you want something to really pop, definitely paint the background of the decoupage paper white. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to go back and we are going to add the papers. So now that it's dry, I'm using liquid patina and I am going to start decoupaging those little pieces on this uh, container. And I start with the pumpkin first and I just lay down a nice even coat of liquid patina to the entire piece uh, where the pumpkin is going to be. And that is what I found to, I, I personally love working with liquid patina with the recycled papers. I find that it just goes on just nice and smooth. I don't get a lot of wrinkles. It's just the perfect thickness. So once I get that nice even layer down, I am going to start adding each of the pieces. And like I said, I start with the pumpkin first. I lay it down and then I just take my paintbrush with the liquid patina on and I just start smoothing it all out. And then I continue to add piece after piece and doing the exact same thing with it. And then I do apply one last coat over the entire piece. For project three, I ended up getting this vase or this pitcher for free. And I, if you remember a while back, I had gotten this old vintage table from a friend that had been a master gardener. He gave this to me as well. There was a little tiny chip on the top. So I just used some of the IOD air dry clay, filled it in and it am letting it dry. Uh, it is, you can't even tell that it's there. So the base, I am painting aviary and I figured I'm going to make this go right with the whole uh, fall display and I am going to just kind of paint all erratic to add just some texture to this and we're going to, I'm going to apply two coats of aviary to the entire piece, let it dry really well and then we're going to seal it. 
and I love using Big Top and I'm just applying one even layer of Big Top to the entire piece. We're going to let it dry very thoroughly and then we're going to come back and I am going to apply a transfer. So now that it is thoroughly dry and that is the key, I have because I am taping and I try to do things very quickly, I always try to get as much accomplished as I possibly can. So my only recommendation is make sure that your clear coat is completely dry before you apply your transfer. The other thing is do not try to apply a transfer over wax. Your transfer will not stick. So here I am. I start in the middle and when it is a curved surface, it is by far more difficult to apply a transfer. So I always hold the middle. I try to make sure that I'm working my way around and that is exactly what I do here and just try to get as much of the transfer off and make sure that there might be a little bit of overlap um, in a couple areas, but I really love how this all turns out. I should mention that this sunflower came from the transfer set Painterly Florals and it is by far one of my favorite sets of transfers for fall from IOD. For project four, if you remembered, I found this on a recent haul and I got it for half price. So I ended up paying roughly $4 for it. And I thought about just leaving it as is. And then I decided, nope, I am going to paint the top and add some transfers. So I am using black velvet from DIY and I am just going to do a nice even coat and just do one coat of black velvet to the entire top of the piece. And then just make sure I, I really don't want to paint the edges, just the very top. So around the sides, I just um, kind of brush so that I'm not getting any excess paint around the very edge. Now, after it dried, I did apply a clear coat to the entire piece. I did use Big Top, and then I laid out uh, some of the transfers, and I um, just kind of placed them about where I thought I wanted it. I decided to do more of a layering effect on this, so I'm going to put two of the roses first, apply those, then we're going to apply the sunflower next, and we're just going to keep adding to this. And this is the set called Painterly Florals, and it comes with the roses, the sunflowers, uh, if that's lavender in there. It just is such a beautiful set, and there's so many pages in there. You can do uh, so many different upcycles with this set. Now that I have all the transfers on, I am using Big Top from DIY and I am going to completely seal the transfers. Uh, anytime you uh, put a transfer on an item, you should definitely seal it with some type of top coat just to give it that extra durability. For my fifth and final project, I found this crock. I paid $5 for it. And I know that I had heard from quite a few comments that this is probably a really old piece. 
I decided I wanted to still do something to it. So I am using IOD's air dry clay and I'm rolling it out. Keep in mind, you do not need a mold to use the air dry clay. You can use your set of stamps as well. So I'm using the crockery set of stamps and I'm just laying it in there, rubbing it very well with my hands. And then I'm going to um, pull the, the stamp off and it leaves a beautiful impression of that crockery stamp. I'm then taking my scissors and I am going to just kind of work like cut around the whole image uh you definitely could use anything sharp like a knife or what have you I just had the set of uh, scissors sitting there so I grabbed that um, after I get done cutting like around the entire edge I just take my finger and I just smooth everything out real nicely and it's set to go on the crock so now that I have the image stamped, I am going to use weathered wood from DIY, and I think it's a pretty close match. It might be a little bit darker, but I am going to use some wax to lighten it up afterwards anyway. So for starters, because I am going to use tight bond to glue this down, I want to paint the edges, and I'm going to paint all the way around the whole stamped image. I'm going to take my hair dryer and dry it just enough before I glue this down. So I have it dried enough and I am like I said using type bond and I love using type bond. It is just the it's always worked perfect for me for gluing any of the clay down uh, to any of my pieces. I just squirt a little on use my finger, rub it very thoroughly over the entire piece, and then I place it and I try to hold it in place. And I want to make sure that I'm getting a good adhesion without uh, distorting the actual image uh, or the stamped image. I just take my finger and I make sure that I'm wiping away any of the excess glue and I go around and just make sure that the entire perimeter is completely down. So after that, then what I do, I let it dry overnight and then I'm going to go back and I am going to apply the weathered wood on the top of the piece. The reason I try to let it dry overnight is that if you start applying paint and the uh, wax or anything like that ahead of time, when it's still wet, you could lose a lot of the crispness of the actual image that you either stamp or in the molds, like when you pop them out. Uh, I like to do the edges because I didn't want any of that paint on the crock. I just wanted to look just like it's on this piece. So I wasn't going to paint. I could have painted the whole crock, but I chose not to. So after it was dry, I did seal it with Big Top. And anytime I'm using either the white wax or the dark, dark waxes, I either seal it or I use the clear wax first. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. Um, if you apply too much of the white or too much of the dark, it just makes it that much easier. So I'm applying a real nice even layer over just the piece of crockery stamp and I am going to put it on and then take paper towel and wipe off any of the excess and I love how it really makes that whole crockery piece just pop. So what did you guys all think? What was your favorite item? Honestly, I loved them all, but I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Uh, this weekend has been really busy. Um, coming up, I am fishing what's called the World Muskie Hunt. So I leave here on Wednesday. Um, so mark your calendars, guys. I am gonna go live at 10.30 
on Wednesday, I am going to showcase all the not new IOD products and I am going to finish that up and I'm going to hop in my vehicle and I will be fishing um, up in Tomahawk, Wisconsin for the World Muskie Hunt. It's a three day event and then I'll be back home Sunday. I will fill everyone's orders and then Monday morning I will get them to the post office. So don't worry, I will definitely get your products out as soon as possible because I know you guys are gonna love them. So that is Wednesday, Friday's video. I am going to pick one of the new items and I am gonna showcase like how I use the product. And I don't know which one I'm gonna use because I love them all. Honestly, you guys are gonna love them. So that's Friday's video. And then Monday's video, I am showing you guys what I got at the bins. I did a thrift haul. I, I was on a thrifting mission, you guys. I found so many goodies. You guys are not gonna wanna miss that either. So you guys have a great week and we will see you on Friday. Bye. Bye.